Nahida has some of the fastest animation cancels in the entire game, tons of weird interactions and in my opinion she is one of the highest value pulls in Genshin. In this video I will share 7 advanced tips that every Nahida main should know. As always we avoid covering the basics and go straight into less known facts and ways to enjoy and maximize our characters. Starting with her normal attack talent, it actually has way more than one would think. All 4 of her normal strings, but especially her charger attack, can instantly be cancelled by a switch, which makes you able to be very flexible when unfielding her. If you don't mean to switch, the charge attack can also be cancelled by dashing or jumping extremely early. These combos also mesh up quite well between normals and her skill and burst. Additionally, it's possible to improve the wind up of her charge attack by performing any normal attack just before it, and that's how you would generally, if ever, use her charge attack. Also keep in mind that this attack is strong in terms of damage and AoE, but consumes 50 stamina, which is a lot. It also, like most other charge attacks, does not have any internal cooldown, which means it will always trigger a reaction or apply its aura. Spamming it in a scenario where stamina is available is a good strategy to squeeze out extra bloom cores or spread reactions, for example. Your go-to attack combos can be N1C for a quick double dinge replication, and 2C for prolonged on-field times instead. But it honestly won't make a big difference and without a shield, using her charge attack often is generally not advised. Onto her elemental skill, as you might know it's able to mark up to 8 enemies per cast and when a reaction is triggered on any enemy marked, she will apply danger to all of them and do a very respectable instance of damage that skills both from her elemental mastery and attack. This is called Tree Karma Purification. This is also where her energy generation comes from, which can be used decently well to funnel particles to any other unit. This is gated by 7 seconds of cooldown. A few important notes are that the Tree Karma Purification and the energy do not reset if you recast the skill. The way you want to use it is by generally holding when marking multiple enemies at different distances and tapping it when they're close. Topping does a little less damage, but it's much faster. The cooldown difference between the two is just one second, so it's barely important. Just like Navia, it's possible for the hold version to hit opponents right behind Nahida, even without actually pending towards them. The skill's off-field danger application is used to keep danger reaction going in basically all of her team, and it also covers any AoE needed. It's less potent if you are about to face multiple waves of enemies, as you would need to tag every new wave. But aside from these cases, it basically guarantees danger application to everyone, with no energy requirement and while being off-field. Which honestly, it's her best and most important feature. Any danger reaction based team is going to like that. One niche use of this skill is using it to keep a burning aura up, which in turn can be used by cryo units to melt their kit most notably by Ganyu and Risley, but technically by anyone. There is however a timing that has to be respected to make sure we don't consume the entire burning aura and end up applying too much cryo. This team is commonly named Burn Melt. Nahida's skill will trigger by any reaction, even if they have nothing to do with Dendro, so Melt is included. It will apply Dendro at most every 2.5 seconds, which basically means two things. By itself, even without reapplying Pyro, it's technically able to sustain melt reactions for its entire 25 seconds duration, which is way more than you should need. It also means that applying too much cryo, doing it too fast or too slowly, or at inconsistent timings, will mess up with the burning aura and potentially make it expire earlier. When we apply an element to enemies, think about it as if it was a stamina bar that continuously gets depleted the more it stays on the opponent. You can react with it, and it will consume some, or you can replenish it. In Nahida's case, we're doing both to keep it afloat. We're using Cryo to trigger Melt, which consumes the Burning Aura, but it also triggers her skill, which replenishes it. For something more practical, if you don't want to get into playing exact timings and be more free with your rotations, it's very advised to use a form of off-field power application, that even if not very strong, will make sure to replenish the burning aura continuously for you to melt away. A strong team that uses this is Risley, Bennett, Nahida and Toma, which has such a good synergy between all four units. If you're looking for any info on that team, check the description links, we already talked about it on this channel. Nahida is absolutely not a must for a melt team however, 
but she synergizes well enough, especially thanks to being a possible Trilling Tails holder and buffing the Cryo Unit's Elemental Mastery. And since we looked at elements and auras just now, let's talk about one problem Nahida can face when playing some of her teams. And in particular, one of my favorite teams which is so fun to play and is able to squeeze insane amounts of damage. And I'm talking about aggravate teams that try to have both Nahida and Anemo. Emphasis on try. The problem with these teams and Nahida is that her 3 karma purification applies quite a bit of danger, 1.5 units and quite often which makes it hard for the animal character to swirl Electro consistently. This can be fixed in two ways, either swirling before using Nahida, which still leaves you with the problem on the second rotation, or the second way that also fixes multiple rotations by making sure to apply more Electro right before using Anemo. I will be honest and say that this is one of the rare teams where going for more manageable danger application, like most of the danger healers and shielders, is probably better, but Nahida can technically offer the most damage in a very ideal scenario. So here's an example for my Kaching team. I will infuse and swirl Electro before going into Nahida, and then again at the end of the rotation, just after Kaching's on-field time, and that's where I'm applying the most Electro. We swirl again there, and restart the rotation. Now, time to answer the eternal question for Nahida's builds. Do I go Danger Damage and Crit, or Elemental Mastery? To make it easy to understand, we will consider three scenarios. Scenario number one, you off-field Nahida, and the character that is on-field wants Elemental Mastery. Since she shares 25% of her Elemental Mastery, up to 250, to the character who is under her burst, the Elemental Mastery build can be a priority and reaching 1000 or close to it is nice. Scenario number 2. You off-field Nahida still, but don't cast her burst or don't care about the Elemental Mastery of your own field character. Thanks to the other Ascension passive, Elemental Mastery will still perform very well, but the difference to damage and crit is smaller. This is also because her skill skills quite a bit better from Elemental Mastery than attack. No need to go beyond 1000 Elemental Mastery here as well. Scenario number 3. On Fielding Nahida. Since her normal and charge attacks do not have the split scaling of attack plus elemental mastery that the skill has, but instead just scale of attack, generally damage and crit will surpass elemental mastery. You're also maxing out her ascension passive a bit before at 800 elemental mastery if the burst is cast. Additionally, damage and crit builds get extra value over elemental mastery when she consistently triggers spread reactions, whether she's on or off field. All of these rules, however, go out the window when you're comparing a bad piece with the ideal main stat to a good one with a non-ideal stat. For example, you want to go for an Elemental Mastery build, but your Elemental Mastery goblet is just a bunch of HP and defense subsets, while you have a Danger Goblet with 30 CV, EM and ER. You're most likely choosing the better artifact over the main stat. But of course, these scenarios can differ a lot, and only a calculator will have the best sensor for your exact case. Also keep in mind that this only applies to Danger Damage versus Elemental Mastery Goblet, Crit versus Elemental Mastery Circlet, and Substat Priority. You're not using anything different there, and for your sense, you're very unlikely to go anything but Elemental Mastery. Attack or Energy Recharge are basically never worth it unless you're low AR and have nothing else. The only time you might want to go beyond 1000 Elemental Mastery instead is in Bloom teams where Nahida is the trigger of the reaction, which is quite rare. Moving on to her pool value and her place in the meta, I want to first address the fact that if you are a Nilo player, having constant and very strong danger application, incredible AoE and Elemental Mastery buffs and game plan is extremely beneficial to Nilo. Nahida is by far, in my opinion, the best unit to pair her with. Outside of Nilo, keep in mind that rarely Nahida is not going to be, at the very least, good in danger teams, quite obviously. The few scenarios where she is not as good is when your team comp highly requires a different role in the spot she would fill. The example could be an aggravate team where no healer or shielder is present. At that point, using a Yao Yao or Baiju could obviously be better for many players. Teams that face multi-wave content where the main damage dealer takes long on-field times, aka Sino in multi-wave, 
can also see other units bring more benefits to the team. Another example is the Animo Aggravate teams we talked about earlier. A more manageable danger unit could be better. But all in all, she's an extremely strong character. All these bad scenarios that I mentioned are honestly not as common, but might be important to some of you. And leaving Abyss out of the picture for a moment, she's actually one of the most useful characters in exploration. Having the ability to gather materials from very far away or use a sniper build where you couple her with Raiden and just destroy everything from far away is quite nice. So good luck to anyone polling, sub or like if you enjoyed the video and if you have a question about Nahida, join me on twitch.tv slash 7 even please and ask me directly. Also thanks a lot for 5k subs, making these videos is really fun and I hope to see you in the next one.